All right, we're going to talk about um, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or the MBTI, and this is just another method uh, for assessment. And many companies, companies use this test or assessment um, in their hiring practices. Uh, Zhang built this, and his work is on the notion that people are fundamentally different, but they're also fundamentally alike. Uh, and this uh, measures Carl Jung's theory of individual differences. It's also known as a type theory. And there are four scale dichotomies in the type theory. There's extroversion to introversion, sensing to intuition, thinking versus feeling, and then the last is judging and perceiving. There's more than two million people that take this test or assessment a year. Um, again, it's used in career counseling, it's used in team building, it's used in conflict management. It's also used in managerial development and understanding managerial styles. So if we look at this, um, we look at extroversion. We know that um, outgoing people, it's 49% of our population, which kind of surprised me. I thought it would be a little bit higher than that, probably because I'm an extrovert and I think everyone's like me. Um, it's a person that's publicly expressive. In the U.S. culture, awards or extroverts and rewards them. Uh, they're interacting. They like to be around people. They're the type of people myself included, that speaks and then thinks. So they communicate freely, but a lot of times they communicate freely and then they regret it afterwards. They're gregarious, so they're energized by other. And then if we look on the opposite side of the introversion, that's 51% of the population. Again, that surprised me. I thought it would be higher extrovert than introvert, because um, I come from a family of extrovert, except one child, bless her. She's in the middle of all of us extroverts. And they're reserved people. They concentrate. They think and then they speak. What an admirable quality. Uh, but they may have trouble recalling names, recalling faces. They're very reflective and they're very detailed individuals. And then let's look at sensing versus intuition. The sensing people are practical people. Now again, this is 70% of the U.S. population. They're specific. Um, they want answers, not feelings. They have their feet on the ground. They like details. They're very concrete in their thought process. And then we have the intuition people. Um, they, um, they are the people that have a sixth sense. So very general, very abstract people. A lot of times we'll think, oh, that's that person that has their head in the clouds. They sometimes appear to be absent-minded. They believe in possibilities, and they're very theoretical when it comes to their thought processes. So let's look at thinking versus feeling. Um, and when we think about that, or when we look at it, it's how we make decisions. So the thinking people, these are our logical people, and that makes up 40% of our population. They're very analytical. They're, they like clarity. They um, show less emotion, so they're, they're in their head all the time. They're, they like justice. They like rules uh, versus the people that are in the feeling component, and that's 60%. And they're uh, majority female, so they're very subjective. They like harmony. Uh, they have a heart for people. They're comfortable with emotions at work. They like mercy and compassion, um, and they look at the circumstances. And then we have judging versus perceiving. And these are the, this is like your orientation to the outer world. So the judging people are very structured, they love closure, they're very time oriented, they're very decisive, they make lists and they use them and they're very, very organized. Um, and then you have your perceiving people. They're flexible, they're open-ended, they love to explore. They, they might make a list, but if they make a list, they're gonna lose it, they're not gonna use it. These are the people that start projects, but they don't <clears throat> finish them. And they're very spontaneous. So they'll just go off. It's like, take a trip, sure, let's go to New Orleans. Um, so they live their life in that regard. So if we look at the 16 types, there are sensing types, and I won't list all of those, uh, but you're gonna do an assessment here. Um, this 
this module to where you'll be looking at if you're a sensing type or if you're an intuitive type. <clears throat> so again, your assignment, this, this module would be to discover your type. And the MBTI has been found to have good reliability, also very valid. And once you find your type, you can look in your textbook. There's just all kinds of characteristics associated with it. You can look it up on the internet. Um, and, and you can also compare it, and you'll, you'll do that to the big five. You know, the newest thing out there is the Enneagram. And I, I, I don't do this in the class, and I might move to that in the future. But uh, the biggest ones for industry are the big five and also the MBTI. So how it's used. It's used in management development programs to help employees understand the different viewpoints of others within the organization. Because I always tell people it's great to know your strengths, but it's better to know your weaknesses. So you'll know how you need to go about improving yourself, especially to make yourself look better within your organization. It's used for team building, so you can understand, because to me, um, as I talked about, my daughter within my family being the only introvert in a, a whole plethora of extroverts, it's, it's, it's hard for her because she can't understand why we're the life of the party. You know, we got the lampshade on our head. We're ready to go. We're ready to do something, and she just wants to go sit in her room and read a book or go play the piano, so it's... And, and, and you look at it in your teams within work situations. You can build a team based off of, uh, you don't want a team full of introverts. But then again, you don't want a team full of extroverts where everybody's trying to be the center of attention. It's also used to demonstrate how differences in diversity can lead to successful performance. All right, that wraps up the lecture on the MBTI. And again, you'll be taking that here uh, in, in this module and I can't wait to see what everyone turns out to be and and read what you write about the MBTI and also contrasting it to the big five.